This is a um, this question's good. I like this one. I think it's the kind of thing you could see on the exam. So, all right. So there's our our bowl, and if we were to release a marble in the bowl and let it roll, would it constitute simple harmonic motion? They don't ask it like that, but I think it's a, a good exercise for us. Simple harmonic motion. If we want to really you know, drill down the whole definition again, we have to check, uh, I guess motion would be the wrong word to put here. Oscillation is the word I think I should put here. So if you're trying to figure out whether this object Oh, you know, is a simple harmonic oscillator. We have to kind of ask these three questions about its motion. And the first one is, does the object have a regular and repeated pathway that it will appear to, to move around? And I think we could say yes. Uh, the next question would be, is the marble going to go about that pathway in a regular and repeating way? Um, I think we could say yes. So I think we could check both of these. Oops. I think we check both of these off. Uh, the question is, can we model the object's motion using a sine function or a cosine function? And that one, I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of do know the answer, being that I've done this one before. But could you decide whether this is a simple harmonic oscillator? I think you would have to take either measurements or find a way to, to relate its motion to something else. Um, I think we have something that we could use that would allow us to, to make this decision, but I don't know that you would have the, the, the thoughtfulness to do so. Um, but this object does actually obey simple harmonic motion. Now, one way to test that would be to, of course, you know, I don't know, get a motion sensor out and record its motion and see if it would be, you know, sinusoidal. But the other thing is, if you remove the bowl, let's put that to the side for just a minute. How different is it from an object hanging on a string? It would be, it'd be identical, wouldn't it? This thing has a constant radius all of the time. It's traveling in a circle, right? The path of it down here is circular. I don't know how different that is from an object inside a bowl. I think they'd be almost identical. So I think there's reasonable you know, arguments to be made that it probably is a simple harmonic oscillator since it appears to have a lot of the similar similarities to a pendulum. Now, you were asked to draw four places and deal with the component of the force. I think uh, we could deal with two places and probably get everything we need for that. The first place is the one up there on the right. There would be uh, two forces acting on it. There'd be weight and normal. Those are the two forces that act on it. And then, of course, at the bottom, similarly, weight and normal, where I would expect the normal force to be greater than the weight at the bottom. <coughs> um, it's in, it would be in circular motion, so I would expect it to have an unbalanced force towards the center for it to stay in circular motion. When you're asked what component do I think is trying to return this to equilibrium, I think it's this component of the weight. It's like an inclined plane. And I think that's the component that's trying to return it to circular motion. I would say it's mg sine theta, the component of, a, uh, of the weight down the ramp. And I think everything about that problem is something that I should expect you guys to be able to talk about multiple choice on the exam. So that's question number two. Any follow-up? All right, question number five, draw a graph showing the position versus time curve for a simple harmonic oscillator. A, with twice the frequency of the one that's shown in the picture, and B, with the same frequency but twice the amplitude. So, um, I don't know what the best way to do this is, but we've got a picture in the book, and the picture looks something like this. Two here, and let's see, one, 
two, three. And so it looks like I have a, uh, a peak here. Goes through here, and there's another peak down here. It goes through both of those and comes back up at four. So. So something like this is what's pictured. So twice the frequency means it's going to do that motion twice as often during the same amount of time. So, yeah, I, I would expect you to draw it with, you know, something like. Something like I think I could do better, maybe. I don't know, perhaps. Something like that. That way it's got twice as many oscillations in the same amount of time. Um, if they want one with twice the amplitude, well, then you're talking about something like starting up here at four, going down here till four or negative four. Now it'd have to be something like like that. I don't know what I'm drawing here, but that's what it would look like. So uh, probably should have chosen different colors, but that's all they wanted you to do. So I think I'm good with that. Any questions? Oh, I love the day after Super Bowl. Everybody's got the same look on their face. Good times. Uh, number seven, sketch a motion diagram and a position versus time graph for the motion of a cart attached to a spring during one period. Um, it passes at high speed through the equilibrium position at time zero. So that's actually what we have right here. So I don't see any reason to draw that again. At least I don't want to. So if I uh, just leave here, um, this is the uh, position versus time graph for an object that is has a maximum displacement at time zero, which is what it's suggesting. The velocity graph, which we've talked a little bit about this, so I think one of the things I want to encourage you to remember is that the velocity graph is the sine function. So you should have it going through zero at that, but if I wanted to kind of line these up, whenever this one is at a maximum, this one will be at a minimum. Whenever this one's at a minimum, this one will be at a maximum. So I want that to be a maximum. I want it to be another minimum here, then a maximum here, and then minimum there. So the sine graph should be like that. So this is velocity. This is position. And you should be able to, in my estimate, recognize that on a test for, say, multiple choice, where I present you with what the uh, position graph looks like. You should be able to pick out which one would represent the velocity graph. And it's, it should be pretty. Um, you should be looking for the same period, but it should be the sine function, not the cosine function. So if I'm asking you what position looks like, you should expect to see a cosine function. The sine function should be shifted so that wherever the one's at a maximum, the other one's at a minimum. But all the, the, like the period and everything should be the same. The amplitude though, will be a different thing completely because it's going, talking about speed, not position. So this you know, unit should be in meters per second or something like that. All right. Right. Two kilogram cart vibrates at the end of an 18 Newton per meter spring with the amplitude of three centimeters. Make a list of physical quantities you can determine about the vibration and determine two of them. If a second 18 Newton per meter spring is attached beside the first one, what will be the period of the vibration? All right, so they're giving me amplitude, which I think we agreed to use X max for amplitude. And they tell me that it is three centimeters. They tell me the mass of the cart, two kilograms. And they tell me the uh, spring constant, 18 newtons per meter. And they ask for all the things we can determine with that. Um, we can determine everything with those pieces of information. 
So be prepared for a, a pretty good list here because I think we can do almost anything. Period, frequency, angular frequency, V max, A max, F max. Right off the top, we can do all of those. And you should be able to do any one of those things. So if you're looking for like something that will bring all the things that are in this unit together, it's right here. Two pi is gonna be square root of m over k. There's that one. Uh, frequency is the inverse of this. So one over two pi times the square root of k over m. Angular frequency is just the square root of k over m. V max is the angular frequency times x max. Uh, a max is just the angular frequency squared times x max. And force max is, uh, would be M A max. What else could we get? Energy of the system. I forgot that one. Energy of the system. One half K X max squared. Those are all of the things that are part of this unit. And you could get all of those from the information they gave us. So um, this next question is ambiguous. I'm going to tell you that right now. So although you can do all of those things with the information I was given, what they say next isn't completely clear. So we're assuming that we have a spring acting on a cart. That's kind of what they're talking about. Something like this. But they say um, for part B, if a second 18 Newton per meter spring is attached beside the first one, what will the period of vibration be? Now, be careful. If they attach the spring like this, that just doubles the spring constant. That's pretty easy. But if they attach the other spring like this, um, that doesn't double the spring constant. That actually makes it less because the two springs will stretch and make it go longer with less force. And I don't want to explain why that's true. It's not necessary. But when they say something like this, they, you need to be careful. Um, doing this problem is actually pretty tough, having the two springs connected like that. So note that if they're connected like this, it just doubles it. And that's easy. That one's fine. Um, another thing they probably should have suggested is what would happen if you attach a spring on both sides like this. That would also double it. That would just double the spring constant. And basically the reason is because in this case, you have twice the amount of force acting. Just like if you had it over here, there would have been twice the amount of force. And that's why it doubles the spring constant. All right. Well, I don't want the number. I don't care. I'm asking if you want the number. <laughs> you asked. Um, yeah. All right, then you'll have to do the the math the mathy math part on that. To if you want to do better on your multiple choice, this is the kind of question you should pay attention to. So we say we have an object that's in a, a spring mass system. So just some cart attached to a spring. They don't tell us anything about the system except for the fact that it has an amplitude of oscillation of A. So it's going back and forth about A. The total energy of the system would be one half K A squared. They would like us to discuss the the what is it? The, what fraction of the total energy of the cart spring system is elastic and what fraction is kinetic when the cart is at A over 2? So the amount of potential energy when the cart is at A over 2 is going to be 1 half K A over 2 squared. That's the amount of potential energy when the cart is at A over 2. And they want the fraction compared to the total. So I divide this by total. That means dividing this by the total, one half K A squared. And we're to compare these two numbers, or we're to take a look at this fraction. 
So um, the one half K, one half K cancels out. The A squared, the A squared cancels out. And I am left with one quarter. So one quarter of the energy is an elastic potential energy. When it's at A over two, that means three quarters must be kinetic. <clears throat> one quarter's potential. The other three quarter, the other, you know, it has to equal the total. So I don't have to do any other work besides that. The total energy stays the same. So if one quarter's potential, three quarters must be kinetic. But I would definitely be able to do that on the test. I see that as a reasonable multiple choice kind of question. But that's what I used to come up with doing this. Now, they said the word fraction. I would prepare for fraction or percentage. They say what percentage of the energy is in elastic. You wouldn't necessarily know to compare it to the total, but using the word percentage and fraction of total are really saying the same thing. So they say less here. You have to know that you would compare it to the total. Does that make sense, everybody? On the actual exam, if they just say what percentage is elastic, they are not giving you as many clues. But you would still take how much you have and divide by the total, and that's the way to do it. A percentage is a comparison against the total. So that's part of the definition, but they don't have to say it that way. Uh, part B says, at what position is the cart when its kinetic energy equals its elastic potential energy? All right, so I think that's a, a harder question. It says that our kinetic and potential will equal the total. That's true all the time. And it's saying what position is it at when the kinetic and the potential are equal. So we're also being told kinetic, I'm sorry, kinetic equals potential. If you want my idea of how to do this, substitute. This is how you'll find the position. We don't know where that is, but we know two times one half K X squared has to equal one half K A squared. I think this one's harder than the percentage question. You have to know more about what you need to do. Now I can solve this for X and that's what I'm going to do. So uh, I'm going to try at least. Now, I cancel out the one-half Ks on both sides, and I get X squared equals A squared over 2. And take the square root of both sides, and I get X equals A over the square root of 2. And that's what they're asking you to do. I think that one's tough. I think that one's real tough. But again, what they told me is that when, I'm sorry, where is it? when the kinetic energy equals the potential energy. So I use that. I remembered that the total amount of energy is always the sum of the kinetic and the potential. So I use that and I did substitution. I don't think it's obvious. I mean, this is tough. I had two kilogram cart. So that's the mass. This is number 28. And a displacement is described by some equation. So hold on, my old eyes are having to adjust. 0.2 meters times, oh, they're using the sine function for position. Don't like that. Man, All right, two pi over two T. Now, I told you guys, you don't have to construct the bar charts. I just told you to find the, uh, the energy for the system. So we want the energy when T equals T over four, and when T equals T over two, and when T equals three T over four, and when T equals T. So, um, 
I'm not sure if you know what they're telling us here with all of these things. This is the period. And they're having us plug in the period of four different times. But if you're, if you're close to reading this or you're paying attention or you have your little chart, your chart might help you here quite a bit. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? That piece of paper with the little spring thing? Might help. Because they're telling us a lot here, or at least they act like it. But there's an easier way to do what they're asking about. So this is one quarter of the period. This is half the period, three quarters of the period, and one full period. Right? So we know a little bit about oscillating systems. So if you look at your chart, at one quarter of the period, where is the object? Not at one quarter of the period. Right. We know the object makes one complete oscillation in one period. So if I, you know, I'll bring up that worksheet too. So if we look at this, this represents T equals zero. That's when it's first released. This is when it's back at equilibrium. And this is when it's on the other side. This is one half of the period. This is one quarter of the period. It's asking where the energy is for these different times. So here, this is where it's passing through equilibrium. All the energy is kinetic. None of the energy is potential. Here, all the energy is potential. None of the energy is kinetic. Now, yeah, I didn't put the rest of this on here, but can you do the rest with that knowledge? I mean, I'm hoping that you can see that it's just going to turn around and go back. So if it's just going to turn around and go back at three quarters of the period, it's all going to be at kinetic again. Because it's going the other way through the equilibrium position. And at one period, it's all at potential again because it's back at the other side. I think we will have to interrupt for some rose giveaways. So we have one for Bella. Oh, yay. Oh, You're so loved. Oh. Oh. Mr. Shelton, you got one. What? <laughs> oh. Yeah. Oh. Are there any more? Oh. Will this be going on all day? Okay. So. Thank you. Thank you. What's that? Oh, it's bell buttering. All right. Well, that was fun times. Um. <laughs> well, I have two Valentine's Day playlists. I want you all to know. My wife loves Valentine's Day, and I think it's corny. So, <laughs> so I play the one that has this song on it, you know. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.